Did you know that 40% of the Dutch children under one year old already frequently are in touch with a smartphone or tablet? And this percentage grows exponentially by the, in the years that follow. By the time children start reading and writing, almost all Dutch children are online every day. When I was in primary school, we just had these few books from the school library we could choose from to search for information for our school project. I really, really think it's amazing how children nowadays have access to the entire information world and can search for information about whatever subject they can think of just with their tablet or smartphone. While I did my PhD research, I had the opportunity to work with more than 200 children to study their, their information-seeking behavior. And I, what I found out was really shocking, because these children experienced so much trouble finding information, and in many cases, they did not find a relevant answer at all. So I realized that children lose so much valuable time wandering around the internet and not finding information at all. So how is it possible that in 2015 we have such an amazing internet, which is such an amazing world of information, which is still such a bad place for children? Therefore, my personal mission is to work on a better internet to really make, make it more suitable for children. So you might wonder, what is this problem then? Well, just like adults, children use the major search engines most of the time to search for information. And let me tell you three problems that children experience when, for example, they use Google to search for information. First of all, it's just too much information. It's, for us adults, it's, it's already quite hard to cope with the overload of information. Imagine how this must be like for children. It's like drinking from a fire hose. It, they just can't handle it. And then they have to pick one relevant result from this overload of information. That's the second problem, because it's very difficult. I can tell you from my research, children are not very patient. And they are fairly easy satisfied with whatever search result seems relevant to them. So they are like these little Christopher Columbuses. They claim to have found the West Indies all the time, instead they just found America. And the third thing is that when they do find information that is relevant, in many cases, it's just too difficult. Imagine that you're looking for a top topic and you're Googling for information, and everything you find is written like scientific research articles. You're reading it, but you actually don't understand the word they're saying. Well, this is how it's like for children all the time when they search for information online. So let me share with you a small video of my research um, where an eight-year-old girl searches for the birthday of our Queen Beatrix, who was the queen at that time. Um, I recorded it with an eye tracker, so the red ball you see is the fixation of her eyes on the screen. Well, she starts actually by making already a major mistake with the formulation of the query, because she chooses the suggestion king instead of queen, which has a quite similar spelling in Dutch. And what you see then is that um, she quite soon chooses the first result. This is what children do all the time, because the first result should be probably the best. But it's always, al almost always Wikipedia. It's just too hard. So you see, she immediately goes back. Well, then she spe specifies her search query by entering the word birth to make it more specific, which is quite, well, quite good. But then you see what happens when children see a YouTube video. 
they really love it, and they get distracted by it all the time. And also in this case, she chooses a total irrelevant movie of King Baby Jesus, <laughs> just because it's a YouTube video. <laughs> well, finally, she specifies her search result even more with the concrete term date. Well, and then you really see what happens when we, well, when a child tries to find information on Google, because she sees the birthday of a total random guy called Hans de Koning, which is king, <laughs> on 123people.com, and she tells me, yeah, I found it. This is the birthday of our queen. Well, talking about the discovery of America. So, I hope it's obvious that this is a problem that needs to be solved. So, let me tell you my dream of how the Internet should look like for children. First of all, of course, it should be a safe place. Inappropriate content should not be visible for children. It should be filtered out. And this has been done for years. This, this is the focus to protect our children from the worldwide wolf that the Internet is. But is it enough? Well, absolutely not. Because by all this filtering, the information that comes through is not automatically readable or understandable for children. Therefore, the second thing, there needs to be much more suitable information for children, really on their own specific level and reading level and their own interests, for each child on its own level. And the third thing is the system should really understand how children think. Results or suggestions that, is, that are being given to children should really correspond to the way uh, children see the world around them. For example, when, when a, a child of six years searches for a mushroom, it should be about dwarfs or fairy tales. When this child is 12, it should be more about the different types of mushrooms. Well, in both cases, it should definitely not be about where to buy magic mushrooms. Well, is this future dreaming? of a scientist? Well, I've got good news, because the future is now. At my startup, we're working on technology to really make solutions for the things I just mentioned, to really make it possible. Our technology empowers companies to really make suitable content for children to, and to really make it accessible. Because wouldn't it be really great when this little boy grows up and, and starts searching for information, that the information is really readable, reliable and relevant for his specific age. That when he opens a browser, the information is automatically adjusted to his specific interests and his specific reading level. My wish is that, that this will be the case for all children in the world, not only this little boy, but all children that grow up in this digital age, that the Internet becomes this better place. I think we're all, as a society, actually responsible for this. We are responsible for the quality of the Internet of our children. We are responsible for the accessibility of information for children. We don't have to accept the way the Internet is right now and only try to teach children how to cope with it. We can really make a change. We can really make it better. We have the power to use technology to make it better. So demand this. Demand better content for children. Speak up as a parent to demand better content for your children. Or speak up as an educator to your school management to demand better access to information for your children. Or speak up to your company management to really make better content for children and make it better accessible. Because I really believe that when we work together on this, that we can really make a change and that we really can make the Internet a better place for children. Thank you.